I brought my bag and not my computer tonight, so <laughs> I apologize for that. So um, why do you want to know about concussion? Concussion is, falls under the category of traumatic brain injury, and it's actually the most mild of traumatic brain injuries. So we consider uh, a TBI to also include leaving in the brain and, and really other severe um, injuries to the brain, um, but concussion is considered a traumatic brain injury. Um, in uh, in uh, kind of the whole spectrum of traumatic brain, brain injury, concussion would be on the lower end, but it's super important because of the sequelae that's caused after a player or person sustains a concussion. And that's why we want to recognize it and treat it and let these kids, in this case, brains recover. Um, so it's really important to recognize. And sometimes it can be subtle. Just as an example, um, last year there were over 300,000 youth athletes that were treated for concussion in the United States. So it's huge, um, and it's something that's really important to um, recognize. Really, it's up to you guys in conjunction with the players and the uh, parents to understand the signs and symptoms of concussion and to recognize it. Where you guys really come in and can be helpful is the way you present um, information about concussion even to your players. So hopefully the kids' pediatricians are talking about it, their parents are talking about it, but it's really important for you guys to talk about it too in before it happens. The problem we find with athletes in general is they don't want to admit that they're hurt or injured in any way. They fear for their playing time. They fear for their future sports career. They fear for letting team down and they fear for their playing time. So it's really great if you guys can approach your players in a way that makes them comfortable coming to you if they feel like they've had an injury, especially a head injury. Um, soccer in the United States is the third highest cause of uh, concussion in terms of youth sports, only behind American football and ice hockey. So it's the real deal in soccer. I think there's a big misconception that people think that concussions are caused from heading the ball, and generally that's not true. It's not possible, but that's not where kids are getting injured. It's going up for the head ball and knocking heads with someone else. Or, um, in some occasions, getting knocked down to the ground, especially on turf, a much harder surface, so we see a little bit more concussion on, um, on turf fields. Um, concussions are actually caused because the, either the body gets struck or the head gets struck and the brain rattles around in your skull. When that happens, part of the brain gets injured, the cells of the brain start producing um, well, they're requiring more glucose, they're releasing calcium, um, they're releasing potassium, all those things that are surrounding the, the brain cells then cause the brain to kind of get irritated and those neurons, which are the cells of the brain, get fatigued and shut down. And what you see as a result of that is the nausea, the confusion, the dizziness. Um, is, is the projection of those injuries to those brain cells. Kids are much more susceptible to concussion because their brains aren't fully um, insulated yet. So the brain cells are called neurons, and the neurons have these long arms that come off that communicate with the next door neighbor neuron cell. Those arms are insulated just like the insulation in your homes that help uh, electrical signals pass through your home more quickly, more efficiently. Those axons, the, the legs coming off those brain cells, are also insulated. It's called myelin. And um, the children's brains are not fully myelinated. And so their brains aren't protected, and their neurons aren't protected, which is why in concussion, especially in youth, um, takes the kids a little longer to recover for the same reason. So in general, and kind of over the whole population, uh, people recover from concussion, mild concussion, in seven to 10 days. And they can be back and, and good. 
kids, it's, it's often up to three weeks, and it's really variable per child because you can't see inside their brains and see how well they're myelinated or how, how their um, neurons are, are responding to that trauma. So um, uh, that's, that's kind of, I think, why it's so important in youth sports to, um, to kind of have that understanding of why maybe kids suffer concussion a little bit more. Um, maybe you get frustrated as coaches, like everybody who gets knocked in the head all of a sudden has to be evaluated for concussion. But in the end, they are more susceptible to it. Their symptoms are a little more vague and can kind of evolve over time. And then their recovery is longer. So it's a, it's a difficult uh, disease diagnosis to deal with as coaches, as players, as parents. I think, um, the, the most important concept I'd like to get across to you guys tonight is that you are not responsible for diagnosing concussion. As a coach, you are responsible for recognizing a potential head injury. The diagnosis of concussion comes after that player goes home and goes to the doctor. So your responsibility is to see a player potentially with some of these symptoms we'll kind of go over in a little bit. Um, and or recognize uh, the, the injury as it happens and pull that player out of the game. So what we uh, in the medical field recommend is that if you see a head injury and signs and symptoms of potential concussion, your only job is to pull that kid out of the game and practice and keep them out for the rest of the duration of that game, the duration of the practice until they get a chance to be evaluated. Like I talked about before, return to play is going to be variable for every kid. So nobody's going to be able to tell you, oh, your player will be back in X number of days or hours or after these hoops that they jump through in order to be um, cleared to play. So you guys recognize that there's been a potential head injury. You pull the kid out. The next step is to notify the parent, obviously, um, especially in the older age groups. Parents aren't always at the games. They're certainly not at the practices. So I would recommend, especially just in our current environment, that it's really good if you guys turn around and, and do it in writing. You know, So send an email to that parent um, that you know your, your kid had an injury, as well as calling them, but just so there's a little trail, like yes, I notified you. And that way also you can get the response back from the parent when that player is cleared. Also, you know, via email, rather than just, you know, the kid gets dropped off at practice the next day, two days later, a week later. Um, just to kind of cover everyone's faces and making sure that those players are, that you guys are clear as the coaches for letting that player back on the field. Um, the parents should take, you know, the kid to the doctor if they want to, but, you know, the parents rule the kids. They can decide that their kid is fine and send them back to practice. That's their prerogative. It's kind of out of your hands at that point. Um, hopefully, uh, most of the cases in, in our club, the kids will be okay. They'll get clearance from a physician to come back to play. Um, as I'm sure most of you are current or former soccer players, you've been hit in the head before, you know that sometimes you're hit in the head and it's not a concussion. As a matter of fact, most of the time it's not a concussion. The severity of the impact does not indicate whether or not a concussion has occurred. It's really the symptoms, and that goes back to every kid is going to be different because their brains are developing at a different rate. Um, you see it all the time in TV and professional leagues. You know, you can clock heads, you can get a huge laceration, you can be bleeding all over the place. They get, you know, stapled up on the sideline and sent back in because they've been evaluated for concussion and they're okay. So you can have what looks like a super traumatic injury and not have concussion. You can, you know, see a, a tackle occur and not think there was even any head contact, but maybe the kids hit the, the head on the turf or but they come up a little woozy, you know, that's way more concerning than big black, even though not to the sideline. Um, so evaluation by, a, you know, professional is important if you, if the kid's been hurt. I, you can't see this, but this is the evaluation forms that we go through in concussion clinics. 
So they're really involved. It's a lot more information than we'd ever expect anyone on a sideline unless you're dealing with a professional sport event where they can do those concussion tests on the sideline. So again, you know, here, tell the soccer club level, all you guys have to do is recognize the potential injury because you've seen it or you've seen the signs and symptoms. So that leads me to the signs and symptoms of concussion, which are super broad. So, um, you know, you can Google signs and symptoms of concussion and you know, go through pages. I think the what you guys need to do is just sort of recognize the most common things, which is, uh, well, obviously, if the player gets knocked out, that's it. They're done by definition. That's concussion. If they get up and they're kind of woozy, that's a pretty concerning sign of concussion. Um, if they express any nausea or vomiting, headache that's prolonged. I mean, you all hit your head, you hit your head on the cupboard. You didn't have a concussion, but it hurts for a little while. So if they're still complaining of headache, you know, it's halftime, you're giving, you know, your uh, coaches talk, and all of a sudden the kid's complaining of a headache, but the injury happened, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes ago. That would be a concerning um, symptom. Nausea, nausea and vomiting, um, definitely uh, one of the more common and concerning symptoms. But sometimes it's just like a lack of energy, a lack of concentration. Um, I, I don't know if you guys, I think it was the Rio World Cup, um, Kramer played for Germany. He had a really bad head injury. You can, you can search it up and see it. Um, it during the game, and he gets kind of knocked, but he gets right back up. And at some point later in the game, he actually asked the ref if he was playing in the finals. You know, I don't think that's something that a, a professional soccer player would um, not know if they're playing in the current World Cup Finals. So obviously, you know, our uh, level of play will be a little bit different, but the, if your players are coming up to you and asking questions that seem really odd like that or seeming to have trouble following directions. So say you start shouting out directions to them on the field and they don't do it. Now, granted, you know, the 04, 05, 06, that's probably just age related. But, um, you know, you know your players, you know when they should respond to the directions you give. So that would be another sign that you could watch out for. So kind of confusion or or slowness um, in responses to direction. Um, super important to, to recognize those symptoms that might be evolving a little bit later after the injury occurred. So if it was a subtle injury, those might be the signs that you can recognize you know, during halftime, later in the game when they're sitting on the bench and you're trying to talk to them about play. Um, and they really don't seem to be getting it, and you know that there might have been uh, an injury, that would be a concerning um, sign. So um, the headache, dizziness, days stunned, probably all the typical symptoms that you would recognize when it, a head injury you either sustained yourself or seen before, those are the signs and symptoms we want you to watch out for. Um, again, if you see that in your player, the first response is to make sure they don't continue playing or practicing. Remembering that, of course, concussion doesn't only happen during games, it can happen during practice, so to keep your eye out for those and set that player out uh, until they are evaluated or you can tell their parents that something occurred and the parents can decide that the player's okay. I think that's like the, the most important part. 